everybody and welcome back to JC's Creek. Today we are on season three. Oh, that's the first time we're saying that on this podcast. My name's Emily, I'm your host, and today we are going to be covering the first episode, Like a Virgin, on Dawson's Creek. So this is pretty exciting because I personally... I'm so ready for this episode, for this whole season. If you don't know already what JC's Creek is and you're tuning in for the first time because it's season three, well, I'll tell you. We go through season, scene by scene of Joey or Pacey or both of them just to be able to cover what will happen later in this season or this whole show. So the reason why we go scene by scene of each of them individually is because I feel like there was a lot of things that happened individually and then later we're like, why Why did Joey do that to Pacey? And it was because Joey did this in season two, which caused her to still do it in season four, for example. And I feel like when you really get to know each of the characters, like Joey and Pacey, then you'll get to know why they did that to each other, what was happening with each other, or at the end of the show, why she kept running away, and what happened with this. And you get to hear every thought about Joey, you get to hear every thought about Pacey, and you get to hear every thought about each other. And you may be like, oh, I didn't realize that this happened in this scene, and it came back to Joey and Pacey in this scene. So that's why we cover each of the scene by scene. So today, we are going on to season three episode one like a virgin this came out in um september 29th 1999 if you have not already make sure you follow my instagram that's Blitter and potter there's also a pacey videos i don't really mention this very often there's pacey videos it's called pacey witter episodes i've been posting on there and we're going through like season two of those videos i take whatever I'm talking about in the podcast and I go like and I make like little videos and I try to like put them on my OneDrive so that way I can go back and re like recreate like Pacey so that's what that whole account is and if you don't know already my Witter and Potter account is all my thoughts scenes random scenes that just pop up in my head so if you haven't already, follow my TikTok, that's Pacey and Joey, and that's all the social media. And without further ado, let's get into it. So the first scene that we have is scene one of Joey. So this is the first scene we see of Joey in season three, and she has looked a lot different since the last time we saw her. If you don't know already, the last time we saw her was with Dawson. And she said, I never want to see you again. Like, I may be able to forgive my father. And I may not be able to forgive myself. But I know I will never be able to forgive you. And so that's what happened last time. So then when we go to scene one of Joey. And she has a job. And in the job, it cuts to Joey holding a gas nozzle in a boat at Logan's Marie. And she checks her watch. A figure, like, a person approaches... And it's Rob Logan. And Rob says, I'll take it from here, Potter. And Joey says, you said you'll be here by 8 o'clock. And Rob says, isn't that sweet? Little girl is nervous about missing her first day of school. Oh, the salad days. I remember them well. And Joey says, spare me this week, sure, Rob. My last class ends at 2.30. I should be back here at 3. And Rob says, don't be late. So, it is good to see that Joey has a job, even if it's with a jackass. And I feel like Joey didn't want to to be alone in the summertime through, um, and that's one of the reasons why she got a job, but the other reason is because, you know, her whole income went down the drain when her father burned the place. And we find out that their school ends at like 2.30, um, which is probably starts at 8.30, which doesn't really make sense to me, because I'm like, I start at 7, and I end at 2, so please someone explain how this is a thing. So, then we have scene 1 of 
Pacey with her. So this is the first time we see Pacey in the show or in the season. And it cuts to Pacey and Dawson in the Lear kitchen, which, you know, is a rare occasion. We didn't see him Dawson's room. And Pacey said, and what happens what happened when you woke up? And Dawson said she moored into pure oxygen and just vanished. And Pacey says, I hate when that happens. If you don't know what they're talking about, they're talking about Eve. Um, Eve was the girl on the bus that Dawson met, who later we figure out is like Jen's sister or something. So Dawson says, it was the weirdest night. She was like the perfect girl. And one minute she was sitting right next to me. And the next, and he snaps, she's gone. And Pacey said, you know, usually when I have those moments like that, I have to change the sheets afterwards. Which is a very bad joke, but okay. And Dawson said, hey, she wasn't real. And Pacey says, what about the one that is real? And if you don't know who he's talking about, he's talking about Joey. Which is funny that Pacey brought up Joey first. And Dawson says, what about her? And Pacey says, well, today is the day. Dawson Leary and Joey Potter have been apart for months now. In fact, the whole summer has passed, and the whole world is waiting to figure out what's about to happen. And I just love how Pacey is just, like, one of those best friends who just points that, like, the obvious out. Like, I am that best friend, and I just want to say, like, go Pacey for pointing out all the obvious. And we saw that a lot in Season 2, but we're going to see it a lot again in Season 3. So Dawson says, maybe you and the whole world haven't heard me like 50,000 times that I said that it's over. Wow, Dawson actually calling it over. Like how many times did he beg for Joey? <laughs> like in season two. And now he's like, it's over. And I'm like, um, wait, what? <laughs> like that's how I feel. And Pacey says, yeah, until she speaks to you. And Dawson says, she won't. And Pacey says, I think you under under estimate the healing of powers of time time for joey to forgive and forget um i do like that pacey said that but i feel like also dawson like made joey turn in her father so um there was no forgiving and forget like i said last episode i was like even if she was able to forgive and forget i feel like that would be a very very long time and i don't know how she could just forget about that like to forget that that Dawson didn't handle that situation correctly, that he didn't go to Bessie, or he didn't get his parents to turn Mr. Potter in, and I feel like that whole situation was wrong, so I feel like there was a lot of things where I'm like, Pacey, you really expect Joey just to forget about this? And Dawson says, even if Joey came up to me today and, uh, and said, I forgive and forget, I wouldn't. I can't forget this past year has been a hellish nightmare. I speak it verbally and, and anishly instead of living. I just I just need to learn to exist and question things later. Which is not a Dawson Larry thing to say. Like I feel like in this episode it's like, um, who are you again? Like, um last season you would never say that. And Pacey says, Ladies and gentlemen, Cape Siders of all ages, new and and fresh from Philadelphia, Dawson Leary. Now, just to play devil's advocate, let's say you go to school and Joey comes and starts to apologize. This is my favorite line at the beginning of season three. This is Pacey talking about Joey. He says, she does that little hair flip thing that, that she does and locks those true, truly remarkable brown eyes of hers on you. What do you do? I love how Pacey just knows this little thing about Joey. Like, it's obvious that they've been friends for so long. And in the show, they try to make it... They try to make it seem like Pacey and Joey haven't been friends for that long. In my opinion, that's really stupid because obvious in this scene, Pacey knows, like, Joey and what she does. Like, she does... And it's true, she does do that hair flip because we'll see that later. And, like, she does have brown eyes, which I think... I think Katie Holmes has hazel eyes, which they make it seem like she has brown eyes, but I guess in the character of Joey Potter, she has brown eyes. The same. And how Dawson replies to Pacey is, I'll tell her that it's over, that it's been over, and we were better off without each other. Which again, who is this character? <laughs> like, that is just my opinion. And 
again, with Pacey, like, he would have never said that in season two. So I feel like this is just a whole new fresh season of who they are. And I cannot get over that he says the little hair flip thing. Like, that is, like, my favorite, like, scene in this whole episode besides the last scene. And this is showing that Pacey pays attention and this is different from season two to season three. And I feel like... Even in season one, Pacey would do this. However, when season two hit, it hit differently because it's like Joey and Pacey never even like connected. But when season three, suddenly they know each other again. And with this, when Dawson says, even though she come, came up to me today and said, I forgive and forget, I wouldn't. I can't forget the past that this year has been hellish nightmare. And I spent it verbalizing and anxiously instead of living. I just feel like I just need to learn how to exist and question things later. So with this, I have to point this out. I feel like Dawson held on to so many things and I feel like he wanted to prove a point when he came back to Cape Size. Like he was the only one who who made he was the one who made Joey go up to her dad and he kept doing it, knowing what was right and what was wrong. And he said he didn't want to question things later, but that's not what Dawson does best and the reason why I'm pointing that out is because we have to repoint that out because I'm like, Dawson is so like, we need to get on this, we need to get on this now. So the scene one, it goes back to another one where Mitch enters the kitchen and Dawson says, or Mitch says, I'm on a coaching conference and Dawson says, all right. And Mitch says, I'll write down the number for the hotel I'll be. Which I'm like, why is Mitch leaving his 16-year-old son alone? But okay. And Pacey says, coaching conference. And Dawson says, what? You haven't heard? Substitute Mitch is Cape Side's new varsity football coach. And Pacey says, congratulations, Mr. Larry. How does it, how are our trusted minimum doing? What's the streak? Zero and 38. And Mitch says, Pacey, you have a little, you have little faith. I can assure you, as a firm, formal middleman myself, that this season will be winning. Here. And Dawson says, see you on Sunday, Dad. And Mitch says, bye. And Pacey's like, wait, wait, wait. You're going to walk out of here like no son, father warning, no rules, no recollection, no empowering shall you, your saint son misbehave. And it's just like, good idea. Keep Pacey out of the house and Mitch winks and leaves. So it's just like, you can just tell that there's a big difference between what Dawson would do and what Pacey would do. And you can just tell Mitch knows that. And again, I'm just surprised that he would just, like, Mitch would just leave his son for the weekend. So then we have scene one of Pacey and Joey, which they don't really talk in this scene, but we'll get into it. So it cuts to Dawson and Pacey, and Pacey's like, she should be here any minute. It's the junior assembly, which, again, like, they're young, but this scene, like, this whole season makes sense when they're juniors to me, because I feel like they're much older now than, than sophomores. I feel like freshman and sophomore year, and like, oh, you would have sex with your teacher, and then you would have sex again. Okay, alright. But junior might, oh, okay, I know what goes on with junior year. And Pacey continues by saying, she has to come. And Dawson says, Pacey, that's enough, all right? I love how Pacey's just hyping Dawson up with all this. Like, she's going to come any minute. She's, she's going to be here. And it cuts to the new principal speaking, which is Principal Green. And Principal Green says, hello, I'm Principal Green. Like you, when I was a junior, I had a new principal and on our first day, he stood us before us and told us some hurting and, and touching words. Words that assure us what has been called for the best of our years. This is not the part of the speech. We're living in a different time. You children are thinking like people twice your age, which can I agree with that? And, Do and Joey enters in the back door of the very, like, back at the auditorium and Pacey turns and glances at her which I'm surprised of them two like stayed throughout the whole summer I'm surprised that Pacey didn't try to hang out with her and uh, the principal continues by saying the dispatch of the 
regrets at the passage that has exist before us and almost now it's in. And it cuts to Pacey turning to Dawson and saying, she just walked in. She's right there, right over your shoulder. And Dawson's like, Pacey. And the principal goes, for example, like the gentleman in the fifth row who's talking. And everyone turns and Pacey's like, me? <laughs> You're talking about me? And I love Joey's face and all this because she's just like, shut up, Pacey. And the principal says, please stand, sir, which I just, I love how he's like, yeah, because I can make a whole bunch of edits with this. And Pacey, my boy, says, that was not take very long. And, and I love how the principal keeps saying, sir, what's your name, sir? And Pacey says, I don't suppose you accept Shannon Barron's, wouldn't you? And again, Joey's just like, what the heck, Pacey? And Pacey's like, Pacey, Pacey Witter. And the principal says, Mr. Witter, Mr. Mr. Witter, I like to applaud you for the first student I meet at the Cape Side who actually acts like one. I hope that someday you all, you all will act like one. Reclaim your youth. Live, live, learn, screw up. <laughs> I love how like, the principal just automatically calls Pacey a screw up. Like, <laughs> live, live, learn, and screw up like Pacey Witter. And he's like, I applaud you, Mr. Witter. And everyone like, claps for Pacey in the crowd, and that put the principal goes, oh, and I'll see you on Saturday in detention. Like, not even, not even before he could, like, say anything, Pacey, Pacey automatically gets detention. Which, I guess in this, it's kind of, like, proving that, like, um, everything with the bag of murder. Everything that's happening, like, I feel like it's just proving that Pacey is, like, one of those people who, like, screw up automatically and they're making this episode really known to that fact. I feel like Pacey, when he's just like, oh, yep, I already got detention. Like, it's chill, though. Like, why would he get detention for, like, talking? I don't know. It just seemed a little bit weird to me. But hey, at least he, like, applaud him. So then it cuts to Pacey and Dawson, like, across the room in the hallway. And Pacey, Pacey says, Principal Green seems cool. Good sense of humor. He was joking about the whole See you Saturday stuff, right? Like, he's just, like, questioning whether he got the attention or not. And Dawson's like, I'm not sure, Pacey. He seemed rather... And then Dawson spots Joey. And his thoughts are cut off mid-sentence because Joey Potter, with her big brown eyes and her little flip hair thing, and Pacey says, Dawson? Dawson? Was there supposed to be a second part in that sentence? I love how Pacey's just, like, oblivious to this. And then Dawson says, you were right. I'm gonna break. I'm gonna crumple. It's Joey Potter at 3 o'clock. And I love how he's there just like, oh. And Pacey's like, oh, okay. And Dawson says, get me out of here. And anywhere. And Pacey's like, anywhere? <laughs> okay. And uh, Dawson says, somewhere, Joey Potter will never find me. And Pacey takes Dawson by the shoulder and says, well, for a merit $25, sure, young sir, I think I have just a place. And they're leading out the door. And Joey sadly looks back at... <laughs> Pacey and Dawson and she does the little hair flip thing which is so sad that like they just leave Dawson, that Dawson and Pacey just leave Joey just sitting there like oh poor Joey she's just all alone again which I know she asked to be alone because she's like get away from me I never want to see you again but it's like, I'm like you don't have to leave her alone like we don't have to talk about that okay I had to pause this for a second because <laughs> you didn't hear me earlier. I said there was a bug. I'm in my closet. I'm always in my closet because it's like the most non-echoey part of my house without anyone looking like, what the heck is she doing? Um, <laughs> and there was a bug in my closet and I tried to kill it with my water bottle. <laughs> so that's how my day is going. But it's okay because then we have scene one or scene two of, have we seen Joey? <laughs> scene two of Joey. And it cuts to, they turn to leave, 
and Joey looks up in time to spot some heading the other way and then it cuts to Joey's house. And Bessie is finishing dinner and Joey enters. Which says it's like, when I say a new season, I say a new them because Bessie's cooking dinner and I love how she's like, hey Joe. And Joey says, no, I'm not Joey. I'm just a soul on her shell of exhaust. Bessie, I swear, if I have to work another hour for this nor Nora of a boss. And Bessie says, it's just until the entrance money comes in and we'll have to, we'll have enough for a sitter and I'll get a job. I love how Joey is doing this, but I'm like, where's Bodie? Like, where the heck did Bodie go? And I feel like something happened between Bessie and Bodie in this, in this season because it's obvious that Bodie's just not there. And Joey says, no speech re required. I remember the bargain if I call that. <laughs> like, Bessie probably just demanded that Joey gets a job. And Bessie says, so tell me everything. And, and Bessie's like, so tell me everything. And Joey says, we got a new principal. And Bessie's like, not about school, about Dawson. What was, what was it like seeing him again? And Joey looks at Bessie's excited face and she starts lying to Bessie. And she's like, it was great. And Bessie's like, so what do you say? Come on, Joey. I spent most of my conversations with teething babies and your sister could use a little venomized pleasure. And Joey says, he just looked at me and I looked at him, which is kind of true when you really think about it, because um, uh, she looked at me and I looked at him and she looked at me and I looked at <laughs> That's what it reminds me of when she says that. Um, however, sh she looked at him and he looked at her and he ran away. That's basically what happened. And she continues by saying, in that split second, it was like we forgave each other for everything. And then, of course, we talked about it, and we were blue in the face, just like odd times. And Bessie says, I'm so glad. I'm so glad, Joey. You two meant to for each other. I'm sure that that's it. And Joey's like, yeah. But I feel like Joey lied because she didn't want to disappoint Bessie. There was a lot of things happening, and I'm surprised that Bessie just wanted Joey to be with, um, be with Dawson. Let's just... Let's just forget about the fact that he made Joey turn in her dad. Like, Bessie, let's, let's not go over that encounter, shall we? And I feel like Bessie's like, okay, well, just forget about it. Like, it's not that big of a deal. And it was the biggest deal of their entire life. And Joey learned that she was, like, lying to Bessie. She could see how excited Bessie was, which I feel like was another point of view when you really think about it. Because... Bessie was so excited to hear about her sister, like, drama and all that. When I feel like when you really think about it, it was one of those things where it was like, so how was it? Like, I'm so excited to hear what's going on, and I'm so excited to see what's happening. And Joey's like, uh, nothing happened, but okay. And when, when I feel like she said, like, he looked at me and I looked at him, um, I feel like this was wrong because it went to a whole different point of view. Like, we just forgot about everything that happened in season two. So then we have scene two of Pacey, where Pacey took, <laughs> took Dawson to a strip club. Which was a very unlikely Pacey thing to do, may I add. Because last, I think in last season, with season two, you could, like, see where Andy comes in and he, like, she, like, helps him out, like, makes him all this different kind of thing. But I feel like when you really think about it, like, it wasn't that Andy made him different. It was that Andy hold, held him accountable. And I feel like when he was in that relationship, like, person to person, which he's still in a relationship. Why is he in a strip club? Like, it was like, oh, okay, all right. But but where's the Pacey Witter that we actually know? Like, this is, like, some sex drive Pacey Witter. And Dawson says, I think I'm having a religious experience. And Pacey says, that would be Wendy, who is a second year biology student at Woodtown. And Dawson's like, how on earth did, did 
do you know about this? And Pacey's like, it's in our bio. He has like a pamphlet, like <laughs> only Pacey, only Pacey, which is like open up the family and like, it's in her bio. And he says, and according to this, she she also likes small children, big men, snowboarding, and the color green. And then a waitress appears and the waitress says, can I get you gentlemen anything? And Pacey is like, well, I have a couple of beers and for my friend here, a glass of milk. <laughs> I love how Pacey's just like, yeah, um, Dawson doesn't need anything because Dawson drunk is, he'll probably just tell me off for the next 25 years. And Dawson smirks and the waitress walks off, which by the way, the waitress is Eve. And Pacey says, you know, sitting here, stuff occurred to me, Dawson. And Dawson's like, what? And Pacey's like, the living of life. It's specifically yours and Dawson's like not to derail manhood or lack thereof and Pacey's like no I'm serious I had a blinding vision about your purpose of junior year and Dawson's like you mean besides the massive and deluded, deluded college anxiety which I felt but junior year is not that stressful when it comes to college unless you're like applying to like a big college and Pacey says yes sometimes during the course of this whole life you are getting going to get laid and Pacey's like come on man and keeping up with this whole new attitude that thing that you got on you met this girl on a bus you met that girl on the bus didn't you and Dawson says yeah I put her up to sleep with the whole ex my ex-girlfriend Pacey I think it's safe to assume that I'm not gonna hear from her anytime and the waitress comes and sips the glass of beer in front of Pacey and Pacey says thank you and she says a uh, milk I'm like, where did she get the milk? The milk in front of Pacey, and she slides herself in between Dawson and Pacey, facing Pacey. And Pacey says, you know, this is actually a group, this is actually a group here. And Pacey, the waitress says to Dawson, you don't remember me, do you? I love how Dawson's just like, nope, I don't remember you at all. <laughs> like, I'm not oblivious. And the waitress says, feel this, and she puts her hand on her neck, because it was a whole scene with Dawson. And the waitress was like, yep, that's right. And Pacey's like, wait, this is root beer. <laughs> and I feel like when Dawson says, I put my whole, like, I put her to sleep with my whole ex thing. I feel like Dawson just always mess up for himself because he's like, oh, here's my ex. Here, here's what happened here and there. And I feel like in this Pacey scene, um, however, I feel like this is a Pacey scene because... Oh, this isn't a Pacey scene that I'm talking about right here. However, I feel like he is not over her. And now he's like, he's like, oh, I'm not over her. And da 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 And earlier he did say that he was. So then we have scene three of Pacey. And it cuts to Dawson and Je Dawson and Pacey walking to Dawson's house. You can automatically tell I'm like, Dawson and Joey, because I'm always talking about them too in, in season two. And Pacey says, by, by little Creepside Village, Dawson Larry has once again proven successfully in errands to avoid little Miss Joey Potter. Although I, I am starting to question your commitment to laugh through Coco. And Dawson's like, why? Because I didn't talk to my ex? And Pacey's like, no, man, because you didn't hook up with that best girl last night. <laughs> Pacey's just automatically like, Look up with her, get over her, which I guess we know what would happen. Anyway, I don't know who Pacey is in this in this episode because we haven't had Pacey act like this since season one, and he's still dating Andy, so I'm surprised that he's still acting like this. And Dawson says, number one, she was working, and she, you saw her give me her number. It's up to her to you. You saw me give her my number. It's up to her to use it. And Pacey says. And if she does, and Dawson says she won't. And Pacey says, Dawson, I wouldn't be so sure of that. And Dawson's like, what is it like the likelihood of someone of the degree life experience and sexual liberty to take in regard of someone who has, who hasn't been taken their PSCT? And Dawson opens the door to find Eve in his living room, which I'm like, where, where did you find her, his living room? But okay. And Pacey says, ooh, I see the, the chances of her, her finding you in her, your living room. And 
he says, hey Dawson. And Dawson's like, uh, how, how did you find my house? Okay. And Pacey's like, this is an excited mail for how did you get in? <laughs> And Eve says, I thought I'd surprise you and take you off on your offer for a day. It's hot outside and the door was open, so I let myself in. And Dawson's like, it's Cape Dad. We don't exactly walk up. And Eve's like, interesting. What else don't you do? And Pacey's like, ooh. <laughs> I need to talk to you for a second. <laughs> Nate pulls Dawson into the kitchen. And Pacey says, normally at this point in the plot, the best friend exits stage Leaves the leaving the brand new Dawson Larry all alone and the mysterious woman in the parentless house. And Dawson's like, I'm freaking out. This is too this is high too high in the good of to be true category. And Pacey's like, I understand. But as someone who has been there before, I'm telling you, all you need to know in some separation, a little time to calm down, catch your breath, and realize that you're in complete control of the situation. So at first I was like, oh, he's talking about Andy. And then I realized that he was talking about Miss Jacobs. And I'm like, um, uh, I'm uncomfortable now. And Dawson says, I am not in complete control. And Pacey says, oh, but you will be. And Pacey grabs the keys to Mitch's boat and holds them out in front of Dawson. And Pacey says, the boat. And Dawson says, what about it? And Pacey says, I think that you should take it for a little spin. And Dawson's like, Pacey... That's my dad's boat. Dad being in possession in that sentence. And Pacey's like, oh, I do. So I was having my dad's police car. So what makes you think that it's nothing with my boat? That's not actually what he says. But Pacey says, under the circumstances. And Dawson and Pacey lean around the corner. And I want this part of the scene. And they just look at Eve. And Pacey says, I think he understand. I think he would understand. And Pacey looks at at Dawson and Dawson takes the key and and Pacey takes the keys and drops them into Dawson's hand which I love Pacey's like go 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 which also in this whole scene Pacey's like wearing this yellow shirt and I just think he looks so good with it <laughs> like I just want to say that and um I love how Pacey's like oh it's nothing like Mitch won't care even though it's wrong for Dawson Mitch and soon about to be Joey. So then we have scene two of Joey and it cuts to Logan Marie, Logan Ron, and they Rob opens the door to the back door to reveal Joey and mid dress, which you can see her whole like as just proves how skinny Katie Holmes is and I'm like lucky. And Joey says, Hey, I'm changing here and Rob says Man, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were back here. I wanted a Coke. And he grabs a Coke from the fridge. And Joey's like, you happen to get thirsty right when I'm standing here half naked? And Rob's like, I haven't seen in those concerts. And he takes a sip and he says, you know what? I'm thinking in the mood of for 7-Up instead. And Rob takes a 7-Up and takes a long sip. And he'll say, I'll knock next time. And Joey says, Next time, I'll lock the door. Which I'm surprised she didn't even lock the door. But this proves how Rob is so disgusting. And he just isn't it. And we'll especially know that later in the season. So then we have scene three of Joey. And it cuts to the boat crashing at the Logan Moron. And Joey saw the accident. And she's like, oh my god, are you alright? And Dawson's like, I and then he realizes it's Joey and he says I think so and Eve laughs and comes into views and Eve's like crashes are so intense which he was a whole different character but we're not talking about Eve we're talking about Joey and Dawson's like Joey this is Eve Eve this is Joey and um, Joey's like and suddenly everything seems comes clear and Rob is just like wait a minute you know this idiot <laughs> you know this moron um Joey's like, I thought I did, and she walks away, which I'm like, Joey, you didn't want to talk to Dawson, and all of a sudden you're getting, up, like, upset when he's just moving on, which is understandable, because I feel like there was, there was, like, a, she was like, I thought there was a lot to say about him, but suddenly, when these are the parts where things change, and I feel like when Joey is just mad about this, it makes kind of sense, because when you see, like, your ex, 
with someone else and you're that young it's like why why do i even bother thinking that this was all gonna change but i feel like joey was like a part of her wanted to forgive dawson but a part of her knew what happened and they had the whole summer to think about it and that's why she was acting that way so then we have the next scene of joey where it cuts to joey and bessie out on, out of in front of Joey's house with the laundry, which I'm surprised they're just doing it in front of their house, which I don't know. And Bessie's like, but I thought you said, and Joey said, forget what I said, I was lying, or at least hoping for the best. The truth is, Dawson's been dodging me for the last two days. And Bessie's like, dodging you? And then crashing, Mitch's, Dod <clears throat> dodging you? And then crashing Mitch's pride and joy? It's like, it's like, one Dawson left for Philadelphia and the other came back. And Joey's like, yeah, his evil twin. And Bessie's like, oh, sis. And Joey's like, yeah, another chapter in the Joey Potter sob story. Penniless green from the other side of the tracks, coats for the film for his father, a slave driver for the boss, and two-timing boyfriend, okay, ex-boyfriend, I kept expecting them to put me on the day, day TV between television commercials. Which I feel like with this, it's like proving how Joey's life has been changing so much. And even she knows that. Like, it wasn't like Dawson and Joey were like, good, good as new. It was like, her dad was in prison. Everything's falling apart. She has like this awful boss. And her boyfriend, who... It's now her ex-boyfriend is not even speaking to her and he's dodging her with his best friend. And Bessie's like, don't go there, Joey. You haven't spent a summer pitting yourself. Don't start now. And Joey's like, at least he could have told me. And then I wouldn't be such a fool. And Bessie's like, about the girl, you mean? And Joey said, one look at her and I knew. She's everything I'm not. Wild, confident, blonde. I feel like this, the kid, little kid, always the one getting left behind. Which, I feel like you can tell where Joey's summer has been going because she's just like, like, I am not that confident. Like, there, I am the girl that I will never be. And this was another version of season one because Joey was fighting for Dawson's attention in season one. And now she's fighting for his attention again, which I don't really understand why she is because she told Dawson to leave her alone. But in another sense, I kind of get it because I'm like, oh, she's just sad that Dawson's moving on. Because when you actually figure out someone is moving on, it's like one of those things where you're like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't like you, but why did you have to, like, go on with your life? And I can't. And she's like, she's probably just been sitting there all summer working and not actually processing this information. So when Dawson comes back, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I actually have to deal with my feelings, which is not a very Joey Potter thing to do, just like how Pacey is with this whole episode. He's like, um, I actually have to deal with the fact that Andy's gone, been gone this whole summer. And as he says, listen, I remember all the time where there was another bonnet in the picture. And Joey says, yeah, and look how that turned out. Besides, it's different now. And as he says, yes, yes, it is. Like, she, Bessie's basically saying, that there was another way to get past this. And Joey didn't have to mope about it all this time. Like, she could actually get past it and move on. So then, the next scene we have is scene four of Pacey. Where it cuts to Dawson and Pacey. And Pacey's and Dawson's living room. Reading, and Pacey's reading a magazine. And... <laughs> Dawson's just searching underneath the cushion as if he could find, like, all these coins and all this different kind of stuff. And Pacey's like, look on the bright side. At least her jaw didn't walk. Which, if you don't know what he's talking about, he's talking about Eve and Dawson just, you know, on the boat. And Pacey and Dawson says, remind me just to start cracking jokes when your assistant looms just, just hours ago. And Dawson says, two more nickels, a shoelace, and a pair of glasses I lost two years ago. I now have a combination of total $42 and 78 cents. Even if I sell my DVD player, 
I'm still close to $2,000 short, which I love how they say $2,000 short. It's just proof that DVD players are um, pretty expensive during that time. Now you can get from one like for like $100. And Pasty says, congratulations Dawson. Next to Bill Clinton, you have paid more than a, a certain service than anyone I know. And Dawson says, if I come up with this money, I'm not, I'm going to pay with it with my wife. And the doorbell rings and Dawson opens it up to find Eve. And Dawson says, hello. And Eve says, didn't think you'd see me again, did you? And Dawson says, didn't know if I wanted to. And Pacey says, hang on a second. Because there's ladies outside. And he says, maybe these ladies don't have to give up their wallets. Maybe, but if they could give up their time. Oh, it's just Eve and Pacey. I forgot about that. And uncon unconsentable talents. And he's like, I like where you're going with this. And Dawson's like, I don't. And Pacey's like, well, we'll throw a party here tonight. And he's like, it's genius. You'll make the cash you need in two hours tops. And Dawson's like, it's insane. I will not turn my house into a strip club. No way. And Pacey's like, teenage, boy, teenage boys will come, Dawson. They won't even know to realize up their even fatals. They'll turn up in their driveway and not knowing what to share when arrive up to your innocence as a child. Of course, we won't mind if you walk, look, look around, you'll say. It's only $20 per person. And then they'll pass over your money without even thinking. And for its money, they'll come and let rest stay left. No, Dawson teenagers will come, and they, they definitely will come. And now in this scene, in this whole line that Pacey just did, he like puts on these sunglasses, and he like looks in the mirror, and he looks so good. And then like the sunglasses zoom in into Pacey's like, like face, and it's just so funny to me. I love this whole scene, <laughs> and it's one of those scenes where you just can't help but just replay it just because of Pacey. Like, what Pacey said was not good. However, it was pretty funny. And so, there, like, it cuts to Pacey is standing with a long line of teenage men, and Pacey's like, step right up, gentlemen, with the money in hand, for you're about to enter the Leary's home of Inclonage. Oh, and gentlemen, Cheetos here, and then motioning to a muscular man, has strict orders to break any of your body of your bodies touching the lady. Understand? All right, get in there. Which, again, this is just such a not crazy thing to do, but it was like in season two. However, it was in season one, and I just I just couldn't help but just laugh at this whole scene episode with Pacey because it's just like okay, Pacey. So then we have. Scene four of Joey, and it cuts to Joey in Dawson's bedroom. Which I was saying that this is not a PC scene. Well, this is not a Joey scene that we're about to see or we're about to listen to. And Joey says, um, "Hey," because Dawson comes in and lays in his bed, and Dawson turns to find Joey sitting at his desk. And Dawson says, "Hey," and Joey says, "Bragger downstairs, huh?" And Dawson says, yeah, less than a, than a week into my junior year, and I already have my life a complete upper, upper he head. And Dawson is good. And Joey says, then I probably am the last person you want to see. And Joey says, you're a lot of things, Joey, but you're never the last person I want to see. Because he's like, Eve's the last person I want to see. And Joey gets up, and she moves to sit by him on the bed. And Joey's like, Dawson, um, I'm sorry. Not about today, but about everything. And my first thought is, Joey, why are you apologizing? Wait, she's like, about my dad, I was wrong. However, in the moment of adolescent anger and upset, I lash at the one person who cares about me the most. Who, who I care about the most. Um... Girl, why are you apologizing? <laughs> like, that's how I always feel when Joey starts apologizing. I'm like, um, why are you apologizing again? Like, there was no reason for you to apologize. Like, I get that there was, like, a little bit moment to apologize in some type of way. But in another way, he literally told you to turn in your father. It's okay to not apologize over that. Like, just let it go and move on. Like, it's a sad thing that you have to do. But it's one of those things where you're like, 
um, okay, bye. And Dawson says, you should have called me, Joe, or written. You should have contacted me. Which, um, Dawson, I don't see you contacting Joey. Like, I, I get that she was like, I never want to talk to you again. But she was probably angered this whole summer. And then suddenly she saw you and she was like, oh, I think I'm in love again. And Joey says, I should have done a lot of things. But I was so ashamed. I figured I ignored my life for a while, but you can't do that forever, can you? See, this is what I was talking about earlier. I was talking about how there was a lot of things that was happening, um, but Joey was just trying to avoid everything that was happening. Like, there was a relationship there, and there was a lot of things that were going on with Dawson and Joey, but it wasn't like they were just sitting there waiting for each other. Like... They moved on. Joey didn't move on, but Dawson did. And he, he's, they're like, you gotta think about this. Like, Dawson is throwing a party downstairs because he crashed a boat to earn his money. Like, he needs to earn more money, but also in the same sense, like, Joey, what are you doing there? Like, there is no point of you doing there. Like, oh, hey, like, I know that you trained my father. You told me to train my father in, and I said these things that didn't really make sense at the time. I'm like, um, Joey, it made all the sense of why you said that. And Joey was like, I was so ashamed of everything. And I'm like, girl, what are you ashamed of? Like, for yelling at him for the truth? And Dawson says, no, you can't. And Joey says, who is she? And Dawson says, Eve, I just met her. And Joey says, are you two? And Dawson says, hardly. And Joey says, did you miss me? And Dawson says, you know I did. No, clearly she didn't because you didn't even bring her a phone call or send her a bunch of letters. But you did give her the space that she needs, so congratulations, Dawson. You did not do that in season two. And Joey says, good. And she moves up and she's like standing above him. She's like, because I missed you too. <laughs> like, this whole scene is just weird. And Dawson's like, it's not the same anymore, Joe, which... He hardly call her Joe. That's a Pacey thing. Don't call her Joe, Dawson. And Joey says, it's, It doesn't have to be the same, Dawson. It's a new year. It can be different. It can be better. And she pulls off her shirt, and Dawson just stares at her. And then Dawson and Joey are just awkwardly standing there. And she tries to move in closer, and Dawson's like, No. And Joey's like, What? What is it? What's wrong? And Dawson says, Everything. This is not you. And Joey says, I could be sexual. And Dawson, she's like, I could be sexual, Dawson. And Dawson says the weird thing that just kind of all creeps me out. He's like, I know you can, Joey, but we can't do this. Not like this. Not not now, not like this. Put your shirt back. And like, uh, okay. Like, that, uh, like, put your shirt back on. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to see that. Like, you could have, like, said it a little bit nicer, but I get I get where you're coming from, and Dawson's like, I'm sorry if you're hurt, and Dawson, Joey's like, hurt? Why, why would I be hurt, Dawson? I hope you're not delusional enough to think some embarrassing attempt of getting you back. Besides, of sex is all you're thinking about these days, and I get why Joey's, like, lashing out on him, because she is embarrassed and she's hurt, like Dawson says, but she just wants to cover it up because that's what Joey does whenever she's upset about something. She always seems to, like, just kind of ignore the problem and just be like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hurt, like, at all. Like, I'm, I'm okay. Like, everything's okay. And Dawson's, and also what Joey does whenever she's nervous or embarrassed, she just ends up rambling. And Joey said, Dawson says, sex is not all about it, Joey. And you, more than anyone, should know that. And Joey says, I am not responsible for your sexual inexperience. And Joey, Dawson says, I'm not blaming you. And Joey says, I never stopped you from seeing anyone else. And Dawson says, that was particularly clear when you dumped me twice. So now they're, like, facing reality of them, too. Like, Dawson was obviously trying to avoid, ra like, reality when he went to Gail's house and and, and Joey just, like, tried to avoid reality when she realized her dad was in jail and she no longer has a boyfriend. And Joey says, you had time, Dawson. There was plenty of time for you to have fun, all the fun you wanted. It's not my fault if you're still a virgin. Like, dang, Joey. <laughs> like, when Joey's mad, she says, like, 
if she either says go to hell or if she just like goes on a whole nother rant which sorry i feel like when joey like goes on a whole rant with pacey pacey's like okay what the heck is happening and with dawson he like fights back with her and dawson says i love you joe what what happened between us or didn't happen was because both of us wanted it that way and joey says what's wrong what's so wrong with me and Dawson says, it's not you, it's us. I can't go through it all that all that way again. You said it will be different, but it won't be. And Joey says, you don't know that. And Dawson says, yes, I do. And so do you. Joey, another year like, like last year. And I can promise you there will be no more love left between us. Um, sir, there is no love between you two. And Joey says, so is there anything else? And Dawson says, yes. And Joey says, so do you love, you love me, you just don't want me. And Dawson doesn't answer, and Joey starts crying and exits through the window. So I feel like this is like one of those things where you have to learn when you're a teenager or even later in life, that there are like going to be some people in your life that will love you, but they don't really want you in a certain way. Whether that's a family member, a friend, or a boyfriend, like, it's one of those things you have to learn. And for me, I have learned that lesson, and it sucks. Like, it literally sucks to know that feeling. And Joey now knows that feeling, and it's like, have you ever experienced that? It's the pain that just hits so differently. Like, you want to be with them, and it's like, you want to care about them. You want to know them, but you just don't actually want to spend time with them. And so... Obviously, when Dawson doesn't say anything, it's like, oh, so my fears are confirmed. He doesn't care about me anymore, and he doesn't really want to know me. So all of this fears throughout my summer is right. I was completely right for all of this. Like, I, I'm an idiot to think that he would change and I would change. And there is a lot of grudge, and there was a lot of, like, tension going on because they haven't talked about it. Like, if it was, like... If this was a whole different scene, you gotta think about this. The next couple of scenes would not happen. In fact, the next couple of seasons would not happen. If Joey and Dawson just talked about what happened, Joey would probably not end up crying out of his room. And the fact that Joey was, like, coming out before him, like, in a brawl. Like, hey, like, love me, pay attention to me. And Dawson's like, what the heck is happening? Like, who are you? And I think this is where the prude comes in with Pacey. Like, <laughs> prude. Um, but I feel like when Dawson is rejects her, it's one of those things where Joey kept reject rejecting Dawson last season. And this was her way of getting past it and moving on in a certain way. But I feel like now, instead of Dawson just sitting there waiting for Joey and always pushing her, he gave her the space that she needed. And he was tired of just being that person that, like, was waiting for Joey Potter all this time. And, obviously, Pacey has no problem with that. But Dawson did. And Dawson never waited for Joey. I will say that. There was a lot of episodes in, in the back of, like, in season one and season two where it proves that Dawson didn't wait for Joey and then in this season it proves that Dawson didn't wait for Joey and then in the next scene next season it proves that Dawson still wasn't waiting for Joey and the next uh, season and the next season which I feel like it's just a Dawson later thing and obviously when you grow up you just have to move on past your first love which I feel like Dawson and Joey kind of did but never really did I feel like it was over when when Jack came into the picture. I feel like that was the moment that their relationship was over. But they're like, oh, I still love you, but I just I just don't want to be with you. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to get hurt again. And Joey's like, what the heck? Like, you don't want to be with me? Excuse you? <laughs> so the next scene we have is a Pacey, and it cuts to Pacey downstairs, and Dawson comes down, and Pacey interrupts everyone and says, kids, could I have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen? And as soon as the answer is, I'd like to, bring to present, present to you the man that can make this all possible, Dawson Lear, aka the man that crashes his dad's boat. And Pacey says, I think red pre-glomerous results have a little 
pledge drive are in. So, kiddos, if you could come in the envelope, please. The official tally of the tonight's festival comes to to three thousand dollars one hundred. $3,162. Now, you may call me crazy, you may call me insane, but I think it's time to open this place to the public. What do you say? And the crowd cheers. And then Dawson's like, nope, can't do that. And <laughs> he just rips Pacey off, who's dancing with the stripper, and takes him to the outside the porch. And Dawson says, she wants me back. And Pacey's like, Joey? Pacey, who else do you think it is? And Dawson says, yeah. And as if we were, we were ever speaking of Eve, stands in the wings, uh, wings waiting. And Pacey's like, always comes down to this, my friend, doesn't it? The, mel the Melanin or the Jetsby? And Dawson says, you should have seen her pace. She was standing before me as innocent and as beautiful as she had ever been. And I wanted her so much as I ever had. But I just know that there was a large part of me, part of me, that there was this big part that knows that there isn't the right time for us. Um, sir, there's never a right time for you to. Um, Pacey says, yeah, and Dal like he, he's like, yeah, I, I, I get that. And Dawson says, but I need to know if she's okay. Could you talk to her? Maybe watch out for her for a couple of days. And Pacey's like, oh, no, 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 no. I love how Pacey just automatically rejects it. Like, my friend, in season one, you told me that I should not like this girl. And if I go near her, I like her again. That's basically what it looks like to me. And Dawson says, she needs someone. She never admitted it, but she does. And Pacey's like, Dawson, man. <laughs> and Dawson says, you've been doing it for me. You're doing it for me, Pace, please. And Pacey nods, and Dawson smiles, and leaves the porch. Pacey's like, are you kidding me? As <laughs> he stands there. I love how Pacey's just like, I will not do that for Joey at all, but I will do that for you. Which, later, he is doing it for Joey. So then, we have scene one of Pacey and Joey. And, whew, finally, I just want to say that there is a few things I want to talk about them individually before I get them together. So the first thing I want to say about them individually was I feel like Pacey and Joey were a lot of things, but they were kind of dealing with the summer. And so when it comes back to them and this scene that we're about to talk about, I feel like this is one of the reasons why they connect. And Joey is single, Pacey's not single, but his girlfriend's and um, institution because she has problems with herself. So I feel like when we come to this scene, it will prove how they needed each other, and it, it, it was just one of my favorite scenes. So it cuts to Joey sitting on the dock crying, because the last scene that we saw her individually was her crying out of Dawson's window. And she looks off to see, in her horror, Pacey rowing the boat to her house. And Pacey's like, ahoy, anyone ashore? <laughs> Which I feel like this is just... A lot of this is like foreshadowing in the next couple like uh 22 episodes <laughs> because in the 23rd we'll see what happens and joey's like what are you doing here and pacey says well a funny thing happened i just got in dawson's rowboat and magically drifted to your dock and joey's like magically drifted huh any close if you magically drift any closer i'll kill you and Pacey's like, <laughs> I almost believe that. And it just proves how, like, Pacey and Joey were, like, clashing with each other so much. And I feel like when we really think about it, it's just, like, Joey and Pacey were always struggling to like, get each other's attention. And now that they finally have it, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, okay, we, we can see how this happens. And I feel like one of the reasons why Pacey avoided so much of Joey was because he knew that Dawson wouldn't approve if he knew that, like, Pacey liked Joey in a certain way, which we saw in season one. And I feel like they kind of, the show kind of shifted a little bit. Where season two, where they were like, oh, we don't, we don't talk about them too. Like, we don't, we don't even associate that there was a Pacey and Joey in, in the coming. So now, like, we know how Pacey feels about Joey, 
but we know how Joey feels about Pacey and that's why she just looks so angry at him. <laughs> and Joey's like, he told you, didn't he? And a best friend can say that when something happens with your best friend and their lover, you'll be the first to know about it. And Pacey's like, what do you think? And Joey's like, I think I hate you both. And, and Pacey says, you're going to hate me, but I'm going to say even more. You did the best thing, Joey. You two need to be apart right now. I love how Pacey knows that them two are just going to clash with each other no matter what. And that's why Pacey was like, you two need to step back and not talk to each other. And Joey says, how would you know what I need? And Pacey says, you're probably right. I'm not sure. I, I'm i sure I have no idea what you're going through. How hard it is to let someone go. How painful it must be to know that... As right as you two are, it doesn't mean that you two are right for each other. Which I love how Pacey says this. Because he's always totally talking about Andy, and there was a lot of things going on with him and Andy, and there was a lot of things going on with Dawson and, pa and Joey, which leads to them two sitting on the dock right now where Joey's crying, which, can I say, we're going to see a lot of dock scenes with them two just sit together like this. And Joey's like... And Pacey continues by saying, uh, I want to know a thing about how it makes you want to scream or hit someone or cry. I feel like this was one of those things where he was going back to season two, where, where when Andy left, he was so upset about it. Like, he wouldn't see it, but he was upset. Like, he was scared for Andy. He was angry about, like, how Andy had to leave. He was angry that that all this was happening and now he's sitting on the dock with Joey and he's like I I understand what you were talking about because I had the whole summer to think about how my girlfriend is in like an institution right now and I know how it feels to not be able to talk to someone for the whole summer and not be able to say whatever you want to say and make it all better and Joey says of all the people you have to see to see me like this it had to be you which I feel like it's one of those cheesy lines, but it's one of those cheesy lines where it proves that Pacey was right there. He knew how much pain that Joey was going through. And Pacey says, It's a new, new year, Joey. You never know. We could end and even end up friends. And Joey says, Pacey, I'm already upset enough as it is. And he smiles and he pulls her closer. And he says, Hey, Potter, come here. And she leans against him and starts crying. And that's how this episode ends. And the next episode we'll see is episode two, Homecoming. And uh, a few memorable moments that we have to point out here with Pacey and Joey was this was the first time we see them two sitting on the dock and how he pulls her in. And I feel like uh, this reminds me of Mine by Taylor Swift. Um, do you remember we were sitting there by the water? You put your arms around me for the first time. And if you have not, like, listened to that song, Who Are You? Um, Kara's Lynn, Kingful Daughter, You are the best thing that ever been mine. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's what it reminds me of this whole, like, episode. And I was just waiting to, like, sing that song. So if you have not already, like, done the man to hold um obviously there was a lot of things with the man to hold that makes this episode this episode and i believe it's part one where she writes about how joey or part two of how she writes about pacey and joey and how pacey was like hey i offered if you want to spend the whole summer with me you could and this whole the man to hold will be linked down below but I'm not going to read it because I feel like you guys should read it on your own. I did. I was like, I'm going to read every single thing that happens with the manhole. I would be reading the whole thing to you guys. But it will be linked down below. And another thing that I want to point out with Pacey and Jelly, I loved how there was like a lot of things that were happening. But in the end of the day, like, what, what did I say in the very beginning? Season 1, Episode 1. I was like, the reason why I'm talking to them 
talking about it individually scene by scene is because i feel like there are some scenes where joey and pacey come back together and you're gonna be like oh like oh that's why and that's why i do it individually because there was a whole reason how they ended up together in this episode like they were they struggled Joey struggled with Dawson, Pacey struggled with Andy, which we'll continue to see Andy in this season, and how Pacey and her will end up, and I feel like with Dawson rejecting Joey, she needed that friend, and the show, the friend was Mr. Pacey Witter, which I personally love how much they added Pacey in the scene with Joey. Obviously, Pacey has been a wild one in this episode, and Joey has too, but at the end of the day, their wildness comes together, and they were sitting there by the water, and he put her arms around around her, and he held her, and why she cried, and why she sobbed, and I love Pacey's smirk and the whole scene, like he just does this little smile, and it is one of my favorite things about him, like he obviously throughout the whole episode like he's just like this whole scene he was like um this is what i've been waiting for like i've been waiting for this moment i may have a girlfriend but joey's in my arms right now like best thing ever Dawson, Dawson gave me permission to talk to joey potter heck yeah like count me in i feel like that's how face he was in this scene and so if you like this episode, please make sure to subscribe on the YouTube channel, that's Jason's Creek Podcast, where I post every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's also other platforms that you can listen to, such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Make sure to review this podcast with kind words, please, only. Make sure you comment, subscribe, share, whatever you need to do, and also... You can catch every episode again on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I would love to hear your thoughts on Instagram. That's Winter and Potter. And my TikTok is Pacey and Joey. I hope to see you guys again Friday and Saturday and Sunday. I love hearing your guys' thoughts. So please, 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 please make sure to comment down below. Bye, guys.